Welcome back, you gorgeous weirdos. I'm so glad you're here. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I hope you're having an amazing day, week, weekend, whenever you're seeing this, wherever you are. So we're going to do something a little different today. I'm going to use this color from the Wizards and Wands collection. It's so beautiful and it's chromable because I saw this photo and I'm like, I need to try the bubble nails again. <laughs> I haven't done it in literally years and I did not like it when I tried it the first time, but we're going to try it again. By the way, if your dip powder lid looks like this, it's probably chromable. So this is going to be a real time full length dip application type video. I know some of you guys really love when I do these full length real time videos. So I haven't done one in a minute. We're going to do it today. This is nothing crazy. Just my basic dip powder application. I am getting to the bottom of the bottle of my Azor Beauty liquids. I, I can't remember the last time I finished a bottle of product, but that's how much I love the Azor liquids. So if you need a good dip liquid, definitely check them out. Everything that I'm using will be linked down below for you guys in case there's anything you feel like you need to check out or pick up. But let's get into the dipping. Per my usual dip routine, I start off with a little bit of product on my brush. I'm going to put the brush down in the center of the nail, drag it to the free edge to get rid of most of that product. Then I'll work my way very slowly and very intentionally towards the free, no, <laughs> towards the cuticle or back end of the nail and very carefully perfect that smile line. I find, and I know I've said this a hundred million times in the last few months, weeks, years, whatever it's been, as much as some of you may like to file. And I used to be one of those people. I used to be a file fanatic. If you can really hone in and perfect as much as possible, you know perfection is an illusion. It doesn't exist. But as close as you can get to perfect on your application, the less work you're gonna have to do later. And I find for me, manicures take exponentially less time when you can really nail down, yes, I intended that pun, your application, because everything else is going to be super quick and super smooth sailing from there. So that is what I would highly advise if you're new to dip powder, if you're just getting started with it, or if you've never done it before and you're thinking about it, Rome wasn't built in a day, okay? It's going to take a minute to figure out your liquid ratio, your technique, your getting your hand comfortable doing this because you, you don't, you've never done this before, right? Your muscles don't know what they're doing or where they're going when you're doing this kind of stuff. So it's going to take a little bit to really figure it out. But once you do, it's going to be so smooth sailing from there. So this is the first dip. I'm going to dust off all the excess and then you're going to see the coverage from the first dip. The coverage is beautiful. Sassy's products are unmatched. They really are something special. So I am going to do a second coat, mostly just for strength purposes, but you could probably get away with one coat if you're doing this over another overlay. If you have builder gel or poly gel or whatever over your natural nails. Let's have a conversation about that, shall we? I've had this message a lot in the recent past about can you do builder gel and then dip powder over it? Yeah, of course you can, but why would you want to? That's my question to you. <laughs> I feel like if you're doing dip powder anyway, unless you're like me and you're filming content or you want to pop off your color and change it up every so often, I don't see a purpose to doing builder gel or rubber base gel or whatever the case and then doing dip over it just do dip on your natural nails it doesn't hurt you dip does not hurt you at all no products i mean unless you have a gel allergy and you're using gel products no products are going to hurt you that doesn't mean they're good for you but they're not dangerous for you per se again unless you're using gel and you're allergic to gel products or anything you have an allergy to but here's the thing it's only going to make your nails thick and bulky and that's just more product for you to remove when you're doing removals if you're doing dip over your natural nails that is enough that is enough 
if you want to do extensions and then do whatever you want to do, that's that's cool. Do extensions. I did extensions for a very long time. I I've just embraced my natural nubs and I am loving my natural nail moment for now. I'm sure that'll change at some point in the future because I will miss the claws. Although, and we can have a conversation about this too, I find that I am pretty useless in the real world when I have long extensions. I can't even text, okay? And 90% of the work that I do for YouTube, for social media, for all that stuff, because this is my full-time job, 90% of the work that I do is on my phone. You know, I, I edit on my phone, I respond to comments, DMs, emails, all of that is really on my phone. And if I can't even text and write an email or reply to a comment, I get frustrated, I want to throw my phone, and it's an iPhone, I don't know, 15, whatever the new one is. <laughs> I don't want to throw my phone and break it and have to pay for another one. So I just um, keep my nails short. That way I don't wind up throwing, do I need anger management? <laughs> Maybe. Um, I digress. I, I keep my nails short because I function much better in the real world without long nails. For y'all that have the long nails, I am so jealous. I wish that I could rock the claws every single day and still be normal in everyday activities. I mean, not even texting. I mean, yes, texting. But aside from texting, I cannot type. I cannot open things. I I just, I don't know how you guys do it. Tell me your ways and your secrets and your sorcery. I need to know because I, I'm a little jealous. So <laughs> fill me in. Let me know how you guys... Are able to function like this because I need to know. Um, okay, so we've wrapped up the color dip. This color is absolutely beautiful. I know I'm a green girl now. I don't know how it ha I blame Sassy Mouth for this, to be 100%, because if it wasn't for her, I probably would never have started wearing greens. Jack, stop putting out green dip powder. <laughs> I mean, don't because they're beautiful, but still I blame you. Anyway, uh, finished up the color dip. I'm going to dust off all the excess and this is what we are looking like after two dips. I'm going to encapsulate in clear. I know I probably sound like a broken record yet again, um, but clear dip powder over color protects the color when you're filing and buffing. Now, granted, I don't do a lot of filing. I will graze around the free edge just to clean it up a little bit and then I'll buff over the entire surface to make sure everything is nice and smooth for whatever I'm going to be doing next, i.e. chrome and snakeskin. But it really is just to protect the color and add a little bit of strength. If you do not want to encapsulate, which I would highly advise, but if you don't want to, you don't have to. They're your nails. Who am I to tell you what to do? You don't have to. You can forfeit the clear altogether. You can put it underneath your dip powder if you want to. Uh, although I don't find dip to stain my natural nails, especially if I'm doing a soak off, which I don't really do anymore uh, because peel base <laughs> only because I have to film content all the time. If you want your nails to last more than a day or two, do not use peel off base coat. It works really, really well. And by that, I mean, it's, it's, it's rough because your nails are going to pop off. But anyway, I am all over the place today and I haven't even had caffeine yet. What is even going on? So clear. Yes, you can use it underneath your dip, although I don't see a purpose to it unless you're just using it for strength, in which case, you know, do what you want to do. But I am going to clear encapsulate just to protect the color. Once I am done with that, I am going to activate. Well, I'm going to scrub off the clear first. Um, if you haven't seen me do that in the past, you're going to see me do it today. I will dust off the excess clear with a fluffy brush to get, you know, most of that loose stuff off. But then I'm going to grab my stiff scrubby manicure brush and I'm going to scrub off the rest of that clear excess. And wait till you see the difference in the nails. You can tell you can tell obviously which nails I scrubbed off and it's just going to make your clear way more clear in the finished look because some clears can leave a grainy type appearance, if you will, or bubbly to the surface of the nail, especially over darker colors. But I find that if you scrub off that clear excess with a stiff scrubby brush, it can make a huge difference. Now you don't wanna go in with a scrubby brush right away, of course, and this will all depend on your liquids and your application and your dry time. You wanna make sure that your nails are a little bit set first because if you go in with any type of brush over a wet nail, 
you know, if you know, you know, it's going to gunk everything up. You're going to mush everything around and then you're going to have to take it all off and start all over again, which is not fun. So wait till your nails set a little bit and dust off all that excess and then scrub the remaining excess clear off. You will not scrub off all the clear, I promise. Whatever adhered to that dip base coat is not going to go anywhere. This is just taking off all that excess on top. Look at the difference. That's the clarity difference between using a fluffy and a scrubby. So I highly would recommend. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to activate. I'm going to file and buff off camera. Did I say that? File and buff <laughs> off camera. And then I'm going to show you how to chrome these. And then we're going to get into the bubbles and the snake skin. So I went ahead and filed and buffed off camera. Again, all I did was graze around my free edge. I buffed over the surface to make sure everything was super smooth. And this is what we were looking like. So with Chrome, I find it best to start with a gel base coat only because gel top coat, especially with Chrome, can peel off really easily over a smooth surface. But the gel base will give that gel top coat and that Chrome something to adhere to. So I'm gonna throw a gel base coat over all the nails cure for 30 seconds and then we're going to do the top coat and the chrome. So I went ahead and I let that bake for 30 seconds and her base coat is so freaking good. Look how beautiful that looks just with the base coat, but now we're going to use the top coat. You can chrome without gel. I have done it before and I will leave that video up in the eye for you guys to check out if you want to. This is just my preferred method. As you can see, I have my bubbles ready to go. We're going to do a full coat of the gel top coat. 
I'm going to do my thumbnail last, so you're only going to see four fingers being done right now. But for the chrome, I like to only cure for about 20 seconds. It's a partial cure, and then we're going to rub the chrome in. We're going to finish the cure after we rub in the chrome, so don't worry about uncured product. But I find the chrome sticks best to an only partially cured gel top coat. Again, if you have a different preference, you can do whatever you want to do, but this works best for me. So I'm going to throw on my gel top coat. I'm going to make sure it's level and there are no imperfections because Chrome can do a really great job of highlighting those imperfections, if you know what I mean. So bounce it around in your light, make sure it's completely even and level, then cure for 20 seconds. So I cured for 20 seconds and now here's what I'm going to do. If you want to use a regular chrome powder, you can, but I'm using this chromable dip powder, the same one I dipped, and I'm just going to dip my finger right in and then rub in that chrome pigment and that is all. Dip, buff, dust. <laughs> now again, we didn't cure that top coat 100%, so before we remove any excess chrome powder, I'm going to finish the cure. You only theoretically need 40 seconds to finish the cure, but I don't have a 40 second button on my lamp. I don't think any of us do. That's just not a thing. So I'm going to let it go for a full minute and then we're going to seal this in and apply the bubbles. So now our top coat is fully cured with the chrome. I'm going to remove that excess chrome powder because I don't want any um, texture or chromey bits to contaminate my gel top coat. Now we're going to apply the gel top coat to seal everything in. But before we cure over the wet gel top coat, we're going to place our bubbles. And this is what's going to create that snake skin like texture. And you can do this over any color you want, over any if you want a chrome, not chrome, whatever your heart's desire is, you can do this over that. But for the purpose of this quote unquote snakeskin look, this is what I'm doing. So I'm going to take my cuticle pusher and very awkwardly <laughs> scoop these bubbles out of my little container that did not want to let go of my cuticle pusher and get them on the nail. You do not have to worry about mushing around your gel top coat. I thought that I had mushed things or moved things around because I was moving around the bubbles, as you can see. But when it finished curing, and I'm going to cure for a full 60 seconds, as you're going to see, it came out perfectly. Absolutely perfect. Nothing is mushed, nothing is moved, and it's got that great snakeskin texture to it. So I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of the nails, and then I'll come back and show you the finished look.
So here is the finished manicure doing the bubble nails, i.e. snakeskin nail trend. I think this looks so freaking cool, although I will tell you they are textured and I'm not a fan. I'm still not a fan of the bubble texture, but these look so freaking cool. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I hope this was helpful. I hope this was entertaining. I hope the rest of your day is as beautiful as you are, and I will catch you in the next one. Love you. Bye.